Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are finally going to take a quick look at the Ryzen 7 5700G. 8 of the Zen 3 cores and integrated Vega 8 graphics. Sounds promising. Last time I tested an AMD APU, the A8 6500, it showed good results, well, for 2013 anyways. I bought my 5700G some 10 months ago for around £250 or USD. however, at the time of making this video, Black Friday deals have pushed prices to under £200 or USD, which makes it much better value for money. AMD bundles this processor with a Wraith stealth cooler, but having a prism kicking about, I decided to use it instead. For today's testing, I'm using an ASRock X570 Extreme 4 motherboard, which requires the latest BIOS update to support the 5700G. Be sure to check this before pulling trigger on any of the Gs. Released in April 2021, the 5700G was at first only available in pre-built OEM system, the likes of HP and Dell. AMD made it available for retail in August for 359 USD, along with its smaller brother, the 5600G, for 259 USD. There are 8 Zen 3 cores with boost clocks of up to 4.6 GHz and 8 Vega compute units to handle the graphics. Unfortunately, those are not RDNA based, but should be faster than ones inside the older 3000 series G chips. One of the improvements over the older generation is a better memory controller and support for faster system memory, which the Vega 8 APU really relies on. In this video, I will be testing how the 5700G scales with DDR4 speeds. To illustrate the difference, I have a 2400, 2666 and a 3200 MHz kit on hand. And before you comment, wait a second, that's not fast enough. I know. The 3200 MHz is really considered mainstream these days and it is not going to get most out of this chip, but feel free to send over a 4400 MHz kit if you have one, I will happily retest. With just 65W TDP, can the 5700G be sufficient for a casual gamer without the need of a dedicated GPU? Let's find out. Starting off with few built-in benchmarks, Here's the out-of-the-box original Crisis Time demo. The 2400MHz HyperX pushed an average of 94fps, which was 33% slower than the fastest 3200MHz Vengeance RGB Pro kit. A perfect one-to-one -one scaling between DDR4 speed and average fps. Nice! Dirt Rally benchmark with high settings run nicely on the 5700G. Here, even the slowest kit pushed above 60fps on average making this title more than enjoyable. The 3200 MHz kit leads by 19%. GTA 5 with normal, aka lower settings so 100 FPS on average with the fastest RGB Pro kit. The 2400 MHz was behind by some 15%. The built-in benchmark of 2013 Stomp Raider so similar scaling. The difference between slowest and fastest kit was around 14% in line with the previous games. Forza Horizon 4 up next. Using a medium preset, the average is scaled accordingly and I saw around 15% difference between the slowest and the fastest memory kit. Pretty impressive, I must admit. Cyberpunk 2077 is still a very demanding title and it's a no surprise to see the 5700G to struggle. Using a low preset, the 3200MHz kit only just managed 20fps on average and we follow the 15% difference. Lastly, Heaven benchmark with the usual settings was no exception, just under 16% difference between the 24 and 3200MHz kits. With this, I think it's safe to assume the average increase in FPS is roughly half the memory speed difference. In theory, a 4000MHz kit should push around 650 points in heaven using the same settings. Anyways, are there any volunteers out there to confirm this? With the benchmarks over, let's play some games. To squeeze a bit more out of the 5700G, I let the AMD Control Center apply an overclock which pushed GPU core clock to 2200 MHz. Midnight Downtown Express and some cops. GTA 5 using the normal setting ran smoothly and I saw nearly 66 FPS on average. 
Dare I say, you might even increase some of the graphical settings and still stay above the 60. Fortnite was next. At 1080p with DirectX 12 medium preset, the 5700G delivered an impressive 78 FPS on average. The 1% lows were quite low and there was an occasional stutter, however, I still call this result more than playable. The 2016 Doom with medium settings runs with 47 FPS on average. Changing to low did very little with the frame rate. However, overall, this was a playable experience, but one simply wants more FPS to really enjoy the fast paced action this game offers. Satisfactory, a game you can never truly finish. With low settings, I saw 42 FPS on average. Not bad. But as soon as you progress further and start building factories, I would imagine the 5700G to simply not have enough grant for this title. We quickly return to Forza 4 for an actual race. This time, with medium settings, 5700G pushed 55 FPS on average. Dying Light with medium settings ran nicely and I saw 55 FPS on average. Fun fact, this matches the HD 5870's performance in this title. Nice. The last game tested was Apex Legends. I had to use low settings and I saw 48 FPS on average, which was playable, but because of the fast-paced nature of this game, a higher FPS is almost a need here. With this, what do we think of the 5700G? If you remember, and I know you do, this time last year, the market was in a much worse state with GPUs being scarped left and right. The 56 and 5700G were a perfect stopgap solution for those who wanted Zen 3 cores and were happy to upgrade to a dedicated GPU later on. The Vega 8 is powerful enough to run AAA titles, albeit with low settings at a 30fps. Times have changed however. Does the 56 and 5700G make sense to buy today? I'd say yes. With prices as low as £120 or about £140 USD for the 5600G, there are plenty of B450 or 550 motherboards ranging from £50 to £70 or about £60 to £85 USD. I don't think you can go wrong there. Let me know if you are considering buying one. What do you think of the memory scaling? I hope you enjoyed this quick video and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.